We all know the, the basic questions in life, like if you're going to write a newspaper article, who, what, when, where, why, how. But we're going to put them in a different order. We're going to put them in the order of how our consciousness processes those questions. And we're doing this all simultaneously in real time, but yet there's a developmental sequence. It was identified in, in ancient China 5,000 years ago with the development of oriental medicine and uh, the five element theory. So it starts with the, the metal element. And uh, the question is, when? The question when, the answer is now. It's always now. There is no other time but now. And yet that now is in the middle of a sequence of past and future. But we have access, we only can say past and future because they're concepts that we have in the now. That, so we have access to the past and the future in the now. And yet they're different qualitatively, very different than this unique moment of now where we have all our sensation. We have memory from the past, we have visions of the future that we can manifest or that come to us from the future. It's a two-way communication from both the past and the future. We can affect and alter and navigate differently from the past, let go of the past, create uh, different images. Uh, we, we know in terms of, of consciousness and memory, when you process a memory, each time you think of that memory, you're recreating that memory. And if you change it, you're recreating it in that new way. And now you're going to navigate in life as if that altered memory is the true past. So the future and the past are malleable. And the present is what is clear and real and true and, and unchangeable. And yet it's where we have choice to make change. So that first question is about when. Am I here now? Or am I in the future, in the past, in my mind? To what degree am I centered here now? After we answer that question of when, of, with our, our sensory awareness, not only external with our hearing and vision, but internal on the surface of the body with touch and internally kinesthetic and emotions, our sense of, of our internal self. And then we're getting into that second question of where. Where? There's this whole universe. But where? Well, right here. My, my, my consciousness, my spirit, my soul is embodied in this biological suit that I'm wearing, this bio body suit that I'm using to experience this life on earth and the womb of heaven and to develop, to, to gestate this spirit body that's my spaceship that can travel the, the heavens if it develops properly. So where is, is here? This is where we live. When somebody asks, where do I live? I live here. And it's centered in the heart. And that's the fire element. And so we have the, the question of, of where, and, and also in the fire element. The fire element is, is double. In oriental medicine, we have four meridians instead of two in the classical acupuncture meridians. It's a double uh, element. And so we see that in the chakras as well, because it's the core chakra. It's from Ayurvedic medicine, the core of the other chakras. The other chakras are the top or the bottom of a plasmoid sphere, a, 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 like a donut shaped energetic structure that develops as we develop our spirit body. And so the, the core has a top and a bottom to it. The top vortex of that, of that plasmoid is the, the heart. Uh, is, is the, the, the top of the heart. We talk about the bottom of our heart being like gratitude. Oh, from the bottom of my heart, yes. That's when, when the heart energy is flowing from top to bottom, which means we're navigating upward against gravity, which is our nature, uh, then we're allowing joy and grace in at the top. And that's, that's the where, that's where we live. If we're not really living if we're wanting to live, that's a reverse flow. We're attached to some thing, some thing, some material thing, some idea, some limited form out of the fullness of what is, rather than transcending all that is and being attached to the, the whole itself, the living conscious universe, the divine, divine presence here now, which is 
our nature as a cellular organism, a, a cell in that divine fractal entity. So the, the next question after when, now, where, here, is who? who? What's the nature of this experience? Who am I? Oh, I'm me. I am. I am that I am. I exist by virtue of, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the saying, uh, I think, therefore I am, which I, I translate as, as God thinks, therefore I am, because we're made in God's image. This universe, when we look at the fundamental quantum physics, we see, oh, there's no thing here. It's an image. It's a, it's a consciousness at its base. So just like in modern uh, biology and psychology and modern science, uh, the scientists believe in their limited view that consciousness is merely an epiphenomenon of the brain. It's sort of the, they think of it as merely the electromagnetic field of the brain. Where they're wrong is that it's our consciousness it, when we're in the bio body suit is that epiphenomena of the brain as a field combined with the epiphenomena of the spirit body, making that one unified field. So those fields cross, they intermingle, and they affect each other. The spirit affects the body, the body affects the spirit. That's the nature of an in-body experience. When we're having an out-of-body experience, a near-death or a post-death experience, we're experiencing from the spirit body itself and not influenced by the material biological body, which is now lying dormant, dead, it's recycling, unless you're an American with too many, Americans have too many preservatives in our food, so our bodies actually are preserved after death. They don't, they don't recycle, which is kind of scary because it means it's blocking all kinds of biological functions in life as well. Uh, but those are the first three questions, and that first triad or trinity is, is the metal element, the first part of the metal element, because metal, the metal, metal is also like if you look at the transition metals, the heavy metals of like copper, gold, silver, uh, iridium, rhodium, uh, the, that, that uh, platinum or palladium group, those tw there's 12 minerals that have been identified as also existing in another state of matter that are actually patented as ORMS, orbitally rearranged uh, monatomic elements uh, by David Hudson back in the 1990s. And which was actually, the, I think, the one thing that, that uh, Nostradamus predicted in terms of year dates. Much of what he wrote was very cryptic. But by 1996, the, the ancient knowledge of what we now in science call condensates, the, the Bose-Einstein condensates, for example, uh, which uh, won the research documenting their existence, won the 2001 Nobel Prize in physics. So, so we can study that. We can understand that in the laboratory at low temperature, very low temperature. But what does that have to do with biological systems at, at living temperature? Well, the thing is that this state of matter is not thermally coupled with its environment. It's a spirit nature of, of, of atom that has, that bilocates, that has a partial presence here now. Speaking of here now, those first two questions. It's partly here now, and it's partly other somewhere else, some other time, and this is what allows us to be present in the future, in the past, in a very real way, uh, and to transcend time as a spirit being. Our, our full ultimate nature of who we are is who we're becoming. Who you are now is much greater a fractal presence than who you were when you were conceived, when you were born, when you were two years old, uh, when you graduated high school, you were, are a becoming. You are a growing being. But because you're also a transcendent being on a spirit level, transcendent of time, you already were, in a sense, when you were conceived. You were yourself. You didn't become someone else when you were born. Uh, and uh, so it, it's hard for us to wrap our minds around because our minds, which we'll get to in the, in the fourth question, the why, well, why, why does that happen? Our minds only really clearly know from the past, and this is the ego, our, our knowledge of this linear experience of our developmental navigation through the possibility of space and time. 